ッタグにフィグジュムをつけたらバスタブに泡を立てて蘇み返るの明日のため Okay, so first off, the ED is such a bop. Like, I was just like, I was like going to it, I was like, let's go. Like, the ED is such a bop. I even like rewound it a little bit too. I was like, uh, do a little shoulder shrug, little shoulder shrug. It was good. So, you know, there is something inherently special about By the Grace of the Gods. Like, the moment that I saw season one, like, I instantly took to it, you know. And what's worse is during season one, I had no plans to cover it during, you know, For channel coverage for this channel、I、had no intention of covering it at all it was just something that i was like oh that looks that looks cool looks decent and i remember even watching episode one i was like oh that's cool and I, i didn't think about coverage at all but then i kind of like on the side throughout the first season i watched it on the side and i was like man i really should have covered this in the channel because this is something really special it's like it's literally isekai slice of life and it's just such a cute story And Ryoma is such a endearing character with not only the struggles, you know, that he went through、uh, before, you know, yeah, you know, before he actually was, was Isekai or whatever. It was not only like the struggles that he went through, you know, prior to that, you know, it's also him, you know, kind of like trying to live this solo life and then being discovered essentially by the Jamil family. And kind of being taken in by the Jamil family and beginning a relationship not only with Elia, which is of, you know, of his similar age. And you can kind of see like there's going to be like romance there and things of that in, in that nature, kind of like throughout the future. They've already kind of have established this very close bond with each other. And then he has this very close bond with,、uh, you know, with her father and her mother and grandfather and, and family and, and, and all, everybody that, that's in that, that kind of household. He already has this close knit bond, you know, and then he, then he kind of spread his wings. And he opened up his bamboo forest dry cleaning shop. And he said he kind of stayed back in this town as, as they went on to go through an adventure. She's going to go and enter, I think, the, I don't know if it's a royal academy, but like some kind of magic school or something like that. She's going to go enter that school. He stayed back, kind of like to you know, live his life as an adventurer and things like that. And it was just such a, a endearing story. So when we're back once again, I find myself just like, I'm, I'm sitting back in my chair, just smiling as I'm just watching this, you know, this happen. And. For episode one of season two, you know, it kind of、uh, it st- it laid some groundwork for things that is going to come as we kind of transition into season two.、Uh, the first piece of groundwork that it that it laid down is we met the god of craftsmanship. So basically, we found out this episode, you know, and I, I, I personally didn't know, maybe, maybe you knew already that, that there was multiples that existed. We knew that there was like this subset of gods that had been assisting Ryoma that had a hand in kind of. Reincarnating him into this world and stuff. And those were the ones that he had talked to and had a relationship with and was kind of watching over. He created a shrine for them, all that stuff. But now we learn that outside of those individuals, there's also other gods. And we met the god of craftsmanship, very nice dude.、We've, we also learned that each god may be independent of a world. So, like this god basically said, hey, he, he didn't know about foreign society. So, he didn't really know. About the logistics and、um, what do you call it? Not fe- like tech, I guess you call it like tech of, of our, you know, our, of what would be considered a modern world. He's very much stuck in like what this world's tech is. And that's why he, he took a strong interest in Ryoma because he, he you know, he produced the, you know, kind of like anime type dolls, you know, that, that he had, those, the, the figurines that he had. So he took interest in him. And then we also learned that there's also a, on top of that, we learned that there's a goddess of war. A god, a god of magic and a goddess of land as well. So basically, it laid, it, laid, it, it laid the groundwork for us to be able to have Ryoma interact with other gods as the season progresses. And one of which he's probably going to be the next one that he meets、uh, because they made it a point to kind of be very specific about this guy. And that is Fernobilia,、uh, who's the god of magic and academics. They, made it speci-、uh, they, they, they specifically called him out and they said that he's always in his own world. But we know that basically we're almost going to achieve or do something that's probably going to catch the attention or ire. Of the god of magic and academics, and we know that he's going to meet him. Whether Ryoma does something cool and piques his interest, or Ryoma does something that he's like, yo, what, what is that kid? You know, and he, he piques his interest that way. Regardless, we know that he'll probably be the next god that we meet after the god of craftsmanship.、Uh, 
Uh, the next piece of groundwork that it laid is his employees, the 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 one of the girls that works for him, uh, the old lady from the guild, and um, and himself have all talked about opening up a second shop. Now he's very hesitant towards that. They talked about it in the first season, but now uh, I think he's going to be pushed towards opening a second shop because he he kind of went down a pharmaceutical route this episode with one of the slimes that transitioned from a poison slime to a medicine slime. And the old lady in the guild talked to him about, you know, hey, we, I, if you don't want to be a pharmacist, that's cool. I'll buy all your product because I know that you'll be able to make good product. And basically, he'll have another uh, steady set of income to be able to come in by just simply producing uh, medicines for adventurers on the, you know, for him and then for, you know, on the side, you know, for his for him, for his people. And then, you know, on the side, a second steady uh, stream of income. Uh, and the episode kind of ends with him reading a letter from Elia, and Elia's talking to him about all the different adventures that she's going on, and she's probably going to be, you know, kind of setting, settling down now so that she can attend school. So hopefully, what I'm hoping and crossing fingers, and I don't know if this is going to happen specifically, but I'm hoping that he opens a second shop where she's located, so then that way we get more interaction with Elia. And maybe that even entices him to also go to this magic school or something. And maybe that magic school can also be his his entryway into having this relationship with the god of magic and academics. That's kind of what I'm thinking is going to happen. He'll open the second shop. He'll open a second bamboo forest or whatever. And then, uh, you know, we'll see more interaction between him and Elia, which will be good for romantic sense and, and just, you know, for him as well, for have, you know, for having somebody close to his age. Well, within the, you know, within the enemy's confines of that. Uh, and then he'll get, you know, he'll get more interaction with the, um, he'll get more interaction with the Jamil family as well. You know, because I'm sure they'll be around because Ellie is going to school there. And then if he decides to go to school as well with that magic stuff, he'll achieve something. And then he will start a relationship with the god of magic and academics. So we're going to have a really easy breezy, very fun, very cute season, I think. But overall, I'm very excited that this anime came back. Um, really loved by the Grace of the God season uh, one, like I said. And I watched that one like twice. And then I watched it two more times when it got dubbed as well. The dub is excellent. So I definitely suggest going and watching the dub if you haven't. Maybe if you need like a refresher, you know, to kind of refresh yourself going into season two. I would definitely say go watch the dub. Maybe play your Switch, Nintendo Switch, you know, or cell phone game, I don't know, Genshin Impact or something, but go, you know, go play something and then kind of watch it, you know, passively, just kind of refresh yourself on the season, I think that would be really good, but overall, oh, and the ED, the OP and the ED are awesome, the ED sick AF, but the, the OP is really good too, so overall, really enjoyed it, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to give this a rating, if I had to give it a rating, I'd be like, yo, 10 out of 10, I love By the Grace of the Gods, I think it's, it's, it's an awesome anime, and I'm very excited that it got greenlit for season two, and I'm very excited that it's back. So let me know what you guys thought about this anime in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about season two's opener so far. I assume if you're watching season two that you're either insane or you are also a fan of By the Grace of the Gods. Uh, let me know what you thought about the opening act for season two in the comments. And I'll see you guys next week, my friends. Peace.